Howdy folks, Salber here. Welcome back to the channel. So, today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to discuss why I've been mostly been taking a break, both from War Thunder and creating videos for it. But first, let me get the introduction of our ve showcase vehicle for today out of the way. Then I'll get back into what I was going to talk about. So the M1A1 Abrams is, in my personal opinion, the Abrams I've always wanted in-game. I mean, I enjoyed the original M1. I liked the IP M1, but this, this is the M1 I've always wanted. Because I can remember as a kid watching documentaries about the M1 Abrams, and I thought, man, this thing is cool, you know? And then when the original Abrams was added back in 2018... I was like, man, this is great. And then I was like, hmm, when are we going to get the M1A1? Then the IPM1 was added. And I was like, okay, maybe next time we'll get the M1A1. And then later, in May, May of this year, we got it. So, yeah. So, not too much to say about it, but it has its 120mm M256 cannon, which is more or less based on the Rheinmetall L44 gun. And... Unfortunately, it doesn't have much armor protection, or let me rephrase that. It's pretty much the same as the IPM-1. So it's not bad, but it's not all that great either. Now, I'll get back to the M1A1 in a moment, but one of the main issues with high-tier vehicles in general is their repair costs. And someone asked me the other day, Sauber, why don't you ask them to lower the repair costs? Well... Here's your answer right here. Travis, we just did. We just did that. Notice what he says about repair costs when someone asks him, Sean, can you say anything about it? Okay. Lorraine 40, 7N TMX, because my most favorite vehicles in got more. Uh, a high repair cost. Jagador, I'm not the guy that decides upon repair costs. I don't have a say in repair costs. Nobody's going to listen to me if I go. Go to the repair cost department and tell them, you need to lower that vehicle's repair cost. You're going to tell me, who the hell are you? <laughs> so <laughs> it's not going to work. Trust me. Please. Uh, this is not This is not going to help. So as you can see, he mentioned clear as day that he has no say in repair cost. Just as I'd have no say in the repair costs. But here's look what else he says next. No, I still love the game. Um, even after all these years. Um, I do play it from time to time. Hit. Nice shot. Yeah, that's right, Burko. Got his machine gun good. <laughs> it's, it's, you know. Welcome to the club, Matsimus. Welcome to the club, buddy. Yeah, Matsimus was in today's stream. And... <gasps> oh, God! <laughs> oh, the T-95! Oh, why doesn't the thing <laughs> have stabilizers? Oh, Because historically be so easy. it didn't. I wouldn't even have to stop just... Pop the guy and just keep going. But no. Oh. When I get to... You know what? I think it's my turn to decide. I, I'm going to pick. Because I, I I, did... Like, the first battle, we did seven frags. The second battle, we did, like, what? Four or five? Now I do, like, one or two. When I take your your picks. Oh, God. Four or five? All right. Mm. <laughs> we just played the U.S. So... As you could tell there, he was kind of being a little dramatic, but his frustration was real. And basically, well, first let me elaborate back on the repair costs. The other day, Fly released a video, I forgot what it was about, but he was talking about, oh yeah, it was about the Chaffee. He was talking about how in low tier, the game is alive, because if you die in your first vehicle, no problem. You can get in another one. Now you could easily ask, Sauber, are you not able to do that at top tier? Well, yes and no. Yes in that you can, but no in the sense that if you do, you're basically going to go bankrupt. And that's really the problem with top tier. And when I say top tier, I'm talking about you know, 10.0 tanks and 9.0 tanks because 9.0 is six times out of 10 playing with 
And it's a similar story with jets, but I'll get in, probably get into that later on in the video. But focusing on tanks, when it comes to top tier tanks, the repair costs for just one vehicle alone can be a bit pricey. And I understand they, in, they mean it with goodwill in regards to some tanks like the Leopard 2A5, which is dominating at the moment along with the Leclerc or Leclerc, however you say it. I honestly don't know how you say it. But because the Leclerc, I'm just going to call it the Leclerc. I was calling it the Leclerc, but I'll just call it the Leclerc, was just added in this past update. So it's logical. It starts off with a low repair cost because they don't know how well it's going to perform in game. I mean, as the old saying goes, or at least my old saying goes with War Thunder, it, when it comes to some vehicles, not all vehicles, but some vehicles, what ve a vehicle might have performed well in real life, but maybe not in the game for various reasons. And sometimes it's vice versa. It didn't perform well in real life for various reasons, but for various reasons performs well in game. It's a paradox, if you will. So when it comes to these tanks, some people might say, oh, these are going to be ridiculously overpowered. They're going to be so good. And then they get them and it's like, crap. It doesn't perform well. Or sometimes it's the other way around. People are going to be like, oh, it doesn't perform. It's not going to perform well. It's going to be paperweight. And then they get their hands on it and they're like, oh man, this is a good vehicle. So what my point being is, is that it's never 100%. A vehicle might seem good, but not but it does but it really doesn't perform well sometimes it's the other way around and in other cases the repair costs like for the leopard 2 it's like sure it is a good vehicle but i feel like there should be a cap for when it comes to the repair costs of vehicles i don't know what that cap should be i'm no expert in that regard but you should make it at least to where if you die in your first vehicle, you should be able to take at least one more vehicle without blowing a hole in your wallet. But that's just me. And and that's partly the reason why, after this recent economy change, I was essentially discouraged from playing my Leopard 2. Both of them. Because I had both my Leopard 2 A4 and my A5 in a lineup. Because if I do, <laughs> I'm going to lose at least 40,000 silver if I die in both of them. So it's like, well, that's not going to help. Even if I get 10 kills between the two vehicles, that's not nearly going to be enough to cover the repair costs. Or if it does, maybe not the ammunition costs. It's kind of ridiculous. And I understand there's a good intention behind that, but the good intentions only go so far. What I'm trying to say is, is like, it may sound like a good idea on paper, but it just isn't. And that's mainly the issue of why I've essentially lost my joy in playing top tier. Now, the footage you see here, these three battles that you'll soon see, they weren't bad. They were actually really good. We won all three of them as usual. Now, the reason I like to show footage where we do good is because I want to show the good performance of the vehicle itself and more or less its team. Not I don't really think people would generally want to see you just getting your butt kicked all the time. So, now obviously these matches are not perfect, but as you'll soon see on the third and final battle, I was able to get at least two vehicles destroyed, but it wasn't, as you'll soon see, it wasn't in the way I would have liked it to be. So, yeah. But all in all, just to briefly highlight on the Abrams... At the time when I was filming the replays, or filming the replays, playing these battles, the teams were doing good. Because the update had just came out, more and more people were starting to get the M1A1, and a handful of people got the ADATS, which, the ADATS is actually a pretty decent vehicle. I don't have it yet, at the time of the making of this video, but from what I've seen in gameplays, it's much better than it was on the dev server. For one thing, the missiles actually work the way they should, so that's nice. But going back to the meta in general, um, so I also saw this vid. Who made this video? Oh yeah, Orange Doom. He was talking about wanting, looking 
fi trying to find out what was War Thunder's best patch. In other words, his personal favorite. And his was 1.69, I think. Was that Riga Aeronautica or Flame and Arrows? I cannot hardly remember half of these names. But close air support was a bit overpowered, but it was fun. I liked it. He liked it. And then there was, in my opinion, the welcome change, to which rockets were, I don't really want to say nerfed, but they were more or less fixed. Like, you could no longer kill a Yag Tiger with a, not an RP-3, with the HVAR rocket from like three meters away. You had to get a direct hit or penetrate the weak spots. And the reasoning behind the old penetration system, according to the War Thunder devs, in a question and a se Q and A session, was that it was toned according to the standards back when War Thunder was just planes. You know, the tanks had super basic damage models. You could fire a rocket, and it would land like three, maybe five meters away, and it would still destroy the tank. I think that was for balance reasons at that time, because there were no player-controlled tanks at the time. But when player-controlled tanks were introduced, and you know, realistic damage models were introduced, then they realized they needed to make some changes. And then... The problem when it comes to changes, as I'll soon mention, is that... Like a lot of things, it sounds good on paper, but in actuality, it isn't. So despite that change to a more realistic damage model, people were still not happy. They started complaining, Oh, planes are overpowered, you need to nerf them. So then that's when they, uh, I forgot which patch it was, but they essentially made it to where planes, even propeller-driven ones at top tier, costed an arm and a leg to spawn in. As much as 800 spawn points. Ridiculous, I know. And it just made it difficult and impractical to take planes. Especially when Radar SPAA came out. Keep in mind that this was even before they added the surface-to-air missile ones like the Tunguska, for example before the Tunguska. Like, you could fly on a super expensive bomber, be it a jet or propeller, and you could rush the battlefield, try to find targets, and then an SPAA just wipes you out, out of nowhere. And the main problem with that, without going too deeply into it, is that, sure, they nerfed the radar since then, but even now, the problem with tanks when playing aircraft is that they don't render at a certain distance. So you could be... Whereas, if you're in a tank looking for a plane, you can see their dot from like 10 miles away. Or excuse me, 10 kilometers away. And that's difficult because, sure, they can see you, but you can't see them. And it's not a matter of realism or of having bad eyesight, but it's a matter of properly rendering them. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really know how that render system works, but I know for certain you should be able to see a tank from your plane, the same distance as a tank should be able to see you. More or less. I mean, sure, it could be a small speck on the screen, but you should still be able to see it. You shouldn't have to get within three kilometers and look around and then all of a sudden, tank randomly appears. Or worse yet, an anti-air. And then, I mean, I am glad that they did reduce the spawn costs for helicopters, both without, with and without ATGMs, and aircraft as a whole. But, as far as I know, that did not change for SPAA. You could take an SPAA that's dirt cheap, like the Tunguska costs, what, 100 spawn points? Whereas a plane still costs up to 500? 540 or 600? And with that small 100, so, so, almost said Silver Lion, <laughs> spawn point vehicle, you can just wreck that plane out of the sky. Before they can even see you, before they can even react. And, like, hopefully there will be a counter, but for now, there really isn't. If you spawn in a vehicle, especially an air vehicle, especially a helicopter, you really have to cross your fingers and hope you don't get shot down 15 seconds after you spawn. Because, come on, that's not fun. And, which brings me to my next point. I've come to discover... I mean, I knew this more or less before, but I'm especially noticing this now. Not really as a hole in all the aspects of War Thunder, but mainly for top tier vehicles, in order for you to have fun, it's going to be at someone else's expense. If you lose, no, 
someone else yeah if if you're the one losing sure someone's having fun but not you and that's generally the problem that's kind of hard to solve it's like like i mean back when it was like you know just planes and tanks but before the helicopters before the air to ground missiles or the surface to air missiles it was more or less balanced because as orange would say you had that that try i forget the exact wording for it but that triangular balance you had aircraft which could be which were good yeah like rock paper scissors so for example this is the thing that just came into my mind the rock is the tank and it's countered by aircraft the paper i know the paper and then the paper or aircraft are countered by spaa the scissors <laughs> and then the spaa can be countered more effectively by the rock the tank yeah rock is the tank scissors is the spaa yeah i had that right i was like wait does that sound right <laughs> i was speaking so fast i confused myself but then when you added helicopters where they could shoot you from across the map that kind of made it difficult because conventional aa would struggle to counter but then when you added the anti-air or the anti-air the surface to air missile spaa then sure you could counter those helicopters easy but how do you balance like one side having fun versus the other not because when I play a tank, I understand, sure, I could get destroyed by a plane or a helicopter. But at the same time, I would like to focus primarily on enemy tanks, not so much helicopters or aircraft. I feel that should be the responsibility of the anti-air player. <laughs> Sorry, I had to real quickly take a picture of my Abrams with the, uh, I guess that was Uncle Sam. But anyway, and sure, the anti-air player could fulfill his job by taking care of the helicopters or the aircraft, but then those that want to play the aircraft or the helicopters, they're like, I want to have a fighting chance. And in most cases, you do, but sometimes you don't. So balancing that is quite a paradox. I mean, just discussing it right now, I'm giving myself a headache thinking... How would you balance that? Well, I'll be honest, I don't know. And I'm sure probably the developers don't even know. And that just brings me to the ha hallmark, if you will, of the whole situation with top tier and balance as a whole. Th someone asked me not too long ago, why does War Thunder not fix their game? This was during a match and someone else promptly responded because fixing the game is not profitable and I could not help myself I just face palmed and I was like what so I didn't bother really answering that because I didn't want to start a flame war really but I'll tell you this it's true that in theory fixing the game doesn't make you as much money as adding new vehicles be it premium or non-premium but at least they try to fix the game because long story short i think because many people a lot of these players be it young or old are accustomed also to single player games where balance is a high factor and I mean it wasn't all that long ago where a game was either made or broken based on how difficult it was it you couldn't it couldn't be too easy because it would be, get boring but at the same time it couldn't be too hard because then it would frustrate you so the simple solution was difficulty modes if you wanted an easy and relaxed gameplay you could do easy if you wanted a challenge you could do hard if you wanted a balance of both, you could do medium. You don't have those options in an online multiplayer game because you can't control how good or how bad a player is on your team or on the other team. You especially cannot control how good your own team is compared to the other team. The old saying, you're bad, get good, doesn't really apply in a team-based game. 
because sure you could be the top dog of the team and still lose i remember one time i was playing the t8u with fly didasco and collusion and i think i only had like four kills i forgot what dasco and collusion had i think dasco had more than me but fly had 15 kills in the t8u and only one death that's right a triple ace and yet despite that despite our counts combined we still lost and that was mainly because and it was a fair loss because i only had two deaths myself well the second one was towards the end of the match and i didn't get so, so that and i didn't really have time to spawn in my third vehicle so that didn't really matter but it was a kind of loss i could be satisfied with and i really think that if war thunder adopted this doctrine so to speak for top tier i i'm fairly certain less people would complain in an addition to the fact of course making it to where you could spawn in at least two vehicles without having to blow a hole in your wallet because that's mainly the reason why a lot of players do not like to spawn in a second or third vehicle at top tier because they're it's harder let's face it it's harder to make silver in tanks than it is in planes you can make a crap ton of silver in aircraft than you would in tanks so what this doctrine in mind i had in mind that would help war thunder top tier tanks be at least a little bit more enjoyable is make it to where victory in order to achieve victory it should be more than just shooting the bad guys it could should be capturing and maintaining capture points and i think maybe they should either increase the ticket bleed or add more capture points to a map to make it more dynamic that way if you do lose chances are you'll still be in your same vehicle down to the end rather than being wrecked several times over i don't know but all in all that's mainly why i've been less active from uploading and more or less editing these videos because it's kind of difficult really from going to top tier down to low tier there's nothing wrong with playing low tier don't get me wrong but when you've anticipated high tier for the longest time and you really want to play something you worked hard to grind or pay for it's difficult to just give that up and sure there's custom battles but you don't unlock anything from that you don't make any silver you don't make any rp and you most certainly don't get the same experience that you would from a decent real battle but yeah that's pretty much it and i did was going to say that there was a similar issue with jets but that turned out to be more simple the main issue is like sure you get one spawn but if you have several of your teammates leave the battle and when i say leave the battle i mean like either they quit the battle or they crash rep their wings get shot out get rammed and the enemy team has more aircraft than you you're more or less gonna have a harder time achieving victory and if i and if they not only increase or decrease the repair cost for those as well but also increase the amount of aircraft you had per team maybe that would i don't know maybe that would help a little but i'll be honest i really don't know what any possible solutions anymore they sound good but they may or may not work and at the end of the day they're just ideas and i think the hardest part about being a war thunder staff member is people see your mod tag in game or on the forum they think oh cool you work for gaijin you can fix the game you can tell the devs this you can tell the devs that and i'm afraid to tell you or i'm i'm afraid i'm sorry to tell you but that's just a myth in reality i don't get to talk to the developers my superiors do but i don't i'm just your average war thunder staff member that does his responsibilities on the forum nothing more nothing less and if sean doesn't have a say in the development of the game i especially would not but that's pretty much it oh i'm glad that's out of the way i'm sorry if this sounded more like a rant than a discussion it's just it's just nice to be able to vent your feelings out and to just tell everyone how you feel really but all in all 
but anyway, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate very much the support you have given despite my absence. I literally got four new subscribers since my last upload, and I didn't upload anything new until now. So thank you so much for that. All in all, I will be a little less active during the summertime, but I'll definitely continue to upload however much I can, and I definitely think I'll go back to lower tiers just to, you know, actually enjoy the game better. If one part of the game doesn't work, you still got lots of options. You got aircraft, you got helicopters, you got other tanks, you got ships. But anyway, that is it for today's video. Have a great day, stay safe, thank you so much again, and peace out.